Off of Colleen's pad. Karoff falls. Archibald sends it back up top. Crawford to the front. Deflected in front by Cameron. It goes wide. Pither. Cross ice pass. Shot. They score! What a redirect in front from Luke Pither. Pardon me, Brian Cameron. What an unbelievable tip in right in front of the net. And he had a green shirt on top of him the entire time. Cycling of the puck once again. When an opportunity doesn't uh, go the Colts way, they reset. Look at this pass. Look at that redirect. Well done. It's 2-1 to one in favor of the Barry Colts. If you have the number one penalty kill in the OHL, back for Pereira. Around the boards it comes. Kept out in front. Back at the score. Colin Mahana makes it 3-1. Three minutes and 58 seconds for the battalion to start this second period. Essentially, for the last two and a half minutes, the Brary Colts were playing keep away with the puck against the Brampton battalion. And that converted into this nice backhand from the hash marks there by Colin Bahanna. They say that the backhand is the most deceptive shot in hockey, especially when the puck is not flat on the ice when you execute the backhand. And Patrick Colleen was completely fooled up. Big hit from Tansky as he ran his man into the turnbuckle. And Luke Pinter got the worst of that one. But now coming over in front of the battalion bench. And sorry, in front of the battalion net is Stephen Gaskin comes in. Looking for a piece of Scott Tansky. Tansky just ran Pither all along the boards and into the end turnbuckle. And Luke Pither is shaken up on the bench. He's still looking down. The trainers are attending to him. Certainly got his bell run there, did Luke Pither. And it was just a vicious, vicious shot there. And you certainly don't want to see this happen at this stage of the game. Look at this. This is right off the side. Watch Tansky as he runs him. He gets him into the board. So it's a solid shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder hit. And then at the end of the turnbuckle, he takes it. That's the separation between the two benches where the photographers stand. And there you see Pither on the ice. Block. Here's a break. Brody on the races. Brody right in on goal. Backhand over top of the net. Penalty coming against the battalion, though, as Santini touches the puck. A penalty shot coming for TJ Brody. 10.48 left in the second, and this could be a huge turning point to this hockey game. What a, an opportunity there by TJ Brody, evading two green shirts on his way to the net. Was obstructed before being able to take a shot, therefore you will receive a penalty shot. And that's what T.J. Brody will receive here. Perhaps the most exciting play in hockey, the penalty shot. Here we go. Brody looking to take a three-goal lead for the goal. Steps right in. Colleen comes out. Beats Colleen, but Colleen throws the pad down. And stonewalls T.J. Brody, maintaining a 3-1 deficit. Let's see how this all came about. T.J. Brody coming in all alone. And there's the hack right there on the leg, which created the penalty shot and here's the opportunity right here Patrick Colleen the right pad is down and the save is made game in game out Patrick Colleen has come up huge for the battalion and he's done so on a couple of occasions already this evening and no that high shot from Della Rivera's block getting it right back and hanging on to it Valley puts it down low they score Stefan Della Rovere at the midway point makes it 4-1. That goal for the Barry Colts for me, Doug, was all thanks to Taylor Carnavali and the way he handled the puck right there, right through two battalion players that were skating towards him. He was able to keep the puck close to him and able to keep the puck on his stick and make the pass. That set up the goal. Well done to Taylor Carnavalli to handle that puck the way that he did. The first touch is always the most important touch, and he proved it right there. Alberga gets away. The shot, they score! I think Michael Santini redirects it and cuts the lead in half. It's 4-2. Talk about it.
a boost of confidence for the youngsters scoring against perhaps the best team in the OHL in a pressure situation in the playoffs. Michael Santini getting the puck around the boards. The puck stays in, in the boards more. And Alberga takes a shot. Santini with the screen. Well done by the Brampton Battalion. It's 4-2. to two. Along the ball and plays it back behind the net. Clark taken away from him. Della Rovere out in front. He scores! Stefan Della Rovere makes it 5-2. Well, if you give Della Rovere that much time in front of the net to pick his spots, eight times out of ten, he'll bury it in the back of the net, and that's exactly what he did here. How on earth did he have that much time in front of the net? What a pickpocket job by Della Rovere off Matt Clark behind the net, and then steps out and buries it. As he takes the puck right there, Ken Peroff, too occupied with Darren Archibald on the other side of the net. Matt Clark gets caught, and that's how Stefan Della Rovere has all the time in the world to slot it home. Five to two. Santini to Tansky out in front. Loose puck. Santini to playoffs. They just have to wait and see who their opponent is going to be. Lost the puck behind his own net. He and Lane come together, but that does it. The Mary Colts in four straight games have knocked off the Brampton Battalion twice here on home ice for the Battalion. The Colts win a 5-2 decision over the Battalion and move on in the Eastern Conference playoff picture. Well, the save was well deserved for these Mary Colts players. Would certainly be an understatement. They play total hockey against the Brampton Battalion. Deserve to win every game. And with the team that they have assembled, Marty Williamson and company could certainly see brighter days and deeper playoff series. And there you see Stan Butler and the coaching staff for the Brampton Battalion meeting the coaching staff of the Colts led by Marty Williamson. As is traditional in the OHL, when a playoff series comes to a close, the traditional handshakes at center ice. A couple of all teammates, Petrangelo and Cody Hudson, shaking hands at center ice. Up to the Team Canada. Della Robert. Cody Hodgson, the captains. There's Della Rovere and Hodgson together. Stan Butler, coach of two World Junior Championship teams. Twelfth year as the coach of the battalion. They've made the playoffs ten of those twelve years. Maverick Parks, what a game he had, facing 24 shots, giving up only two goals, had some big saves. Patrick Colleen, what can you say about him? What an outstanding season, and you got to believe the Pittsburgh Penguins have a contract with his name on it. Colleen, fabulous in this game as well. Nothing we expect short of Colleen, what he's done all season long. If you take a look at Patrick Colleen this season, there's no doubt in my mind that he is at least ready for Wilkes-Barre. So, the battalion will salute the crowd and thank them for another great season here in Brampton. A very young hockey club, but a hockey club that, when Cody Hodgson came back, certainly played the brand of hockey that got them to the playoffs and knock off the Kingston Frontenacs in the first round. We're going to take a break here on Battalion Hockey live on Rogers TV. The Barry Colts win a 5-2 decision and take game number four. Stay with us.